All right, let's see here. Now, before I get started, of course, it is a new month, right? It is May. Uh, this session is in hopes and in aim uh, to prepare you for the week ahead of us, okay? Now, let's see. I do these about, I'd say, I do them every Sunday, but about three to four times a week, right? And all of these are recorded in the Google Drive. I have everyone in the uh, Discord, this is going to be a new uh, link for the month of May. So don't be like, hey, where the Google Drive go? I'll have it posted after we upload this session. Okay, so, uh, and remember, you guys in the Discord, please try to make use of this. You guys can type in like supply and demand, right? You can see all the supply and demand, right? You can type in like options contract or just type in options if you want to learn more about options, right? These are all videos that obviously we have had recorded and gone through um, in our trading uh, group for the time being. So uh, lots of look, there's FOMC prep. Hopefully some of you guys check that out this weekend. Uh, lots of strategies and everything that we'll be covering over tonight. Now, um, in tonight's session, I am going to be talking over how to build yourself going into a trade, right? Planning the entries, the exits, and the, your, you know, your price targets where you're going to scale out. Okay, this is what's really helped me. I used to just trade based off of emotion. I don't know, you know, if any of you guys feel like you do. And what I mean by that is like on the intraday, let's just say, hey, like, okay, um, based off of emotion. Okay, so like, hey, I'm going to take this uh, put entry right here on these, these big bearish engulfing double five minute bar knife, right? That's what you take. So sure, in hindsight, it's not a bad entry or bad trade, but you know, you're ba uh, trading based off of emotion. Now, also what that leads into without lack of preparation is that like, hey, you know, let's just say from this point to this point right here, right? You're up. I don't know, $100 per contract on a zero day or one day, right? You're up $100 per contract. You're feeling good, so you're not going to scale out, right? Many traders get into that kind of, I don't know, issue. And when it pulls back, even to your break-even price, a little bit red, this is where you begin to sell because you're panicking. Maybe you sell all out of it right here, but you do not sell right where you're supposed to, right? And why were you supposed to sell there? Obviously, in, in my perspective, this was a pivot low break, right? It bounced down right here, kind of uh, created a sense of support. Or even if you move this level right here, right, you crack the low, a lower low or a pivot break should equate to a scale out. Okay. Um, and so you're, selling, you're trading based off of emotions. You're no longer putting yourself in a systematic kind of mindset when trading. You are only trading when like, oh, I'm scared. Oh, uh, you know, the trade's over, right? And then you see your same entry, right? Because market makers, they don't just, they're not retail traders. They're not taking, you know, X amount of contracts and, you know, that's it. They have to scale into their trade. The same buyer who began to scale into his puts here on the on the first pullback to the 5 minute 90 MA after this knife, right? What does he do? He comes in and he buys it. Oh, hold on. He comes in and he buys it at the same price, right? Why would he pay more? Just try it again, right? Try to see if you can buy him at the same price, risking this area above the zone, obviously. So, um, and you would have gotten wicked out, whatever, you know, trading based off of your emotions right if this comes back to your entry or even slightly red just for a, a small period of time okay then that shouldn't have stopped you out of your trade all right because this was not a clean break maybe you're like hey i want to hold on through the five minute you know you can't you can see previously the five minute 20 ema was not holding you as strong uh you know as very strongly here we know that the five minute 20 equates to the 10 minute nine just about you should have been watching engaging based off the 10 minute nine right and that 10 minute 20 would have held you in very strongly someone's asking about how to get from prevent themselves from getting wicked out so um let's see so i mean some some kind of psychological things that i do so um i posted this trade i don't know if you guys saw it on my twitter today it was a trade that I took based off of the open. 
I don't know. One second. I think uh, I can port it in over. Oh, right here. It, you won't get any audio, just if if you're in the Discord, right? But you can kind of uh, let's see, open this up a little bit here. You can see that I'm talking about taking puts. I say I'm going to take three twenty-three puts or something like that, risking VWAP. I guess the quality is pretty poor. Um, I don't know, uh, risking VWAP here, right? And you can go back and view this tweet. It's just on my Twitter. But practically, like, what I was doing, so let me go to the cues. This was from Friday, so you can just look at the most recent recording. Let me go to a different drawing set. Oh. Okay. So, uh, based off of the one minute, obviously, off of the open. Now, I look at uh, taking trades, right? I look at taking trades like, uh, you guys ever stack, like, cards up? You know, like a like a house of cards or whatever, right? That's really what I look at it. That you know, a trade. Um, I don't know if you're in in your experience, right? You have to be very nimble. You have to be very focused when you're taking uh, a trade or or stacking cards to build a little house, right? So I look at trading or taking on any trade as, hey, this house of cards can fall at any moment, and I need to be prepared for this house of cards, or for these house of cards to fall, right? So when I'm putting on a trade, it's not so much that I have high confidence going into the trade, right? But it's more so me testing my ability, testing my probability. So I took this trade here, right? I always say off the open, you have, you know, your two levels. Most recently, you can see this was the range, right? And um, I took, right, my puts in this general area, Right, not obviously not the top, right? But in this general area. So, you know, this is me scaling in, right? I take initial entry, scale in a little bit more close to my entry, leaving bids, whatever. This is me stacking those initial cards, right? And trying to build for that foundation. I know that at any point in time that I can get stopped out, right? And you saw that, hey, we got the pivot low break. We were talking about scaling out there. Um, everyone should have been able to, you know, follow through with those same rules of scaling out on pivot breaks right especially off the open it's all about locking in profit relatively quickly okay so um going through obviously we have to have our risk well i said if you go back on that tweet i said hey i'm gonna risk the 323 puts over vwap okay it does push up like very early on this candle turns into like a green hammer candle and then it flushes down you know, I scale out here, I think I said for like 5%, a little bit further based on IV and zero days. It spiked up. I think we got out for like 15 or 20% down here. And then we got stopped at the rest, right? Where? Either break even or near VWAP, right? So um, let me go through and try to find another trade that we took. I think it was... Let's see, what trade was this? 428... All right, let me type this in. This is how I'm planning a lot of my trades. So this is obviously wrong, but I'm going to change this 800 piece into, I think this is one. Nope. Okay. Is my drawing on here? Six. No, so these need to be the 29. So, one second, guys. Zero, four. Should be 29. Right here. Perfect. Okay. Let me go to the one. So this is how I'm planning out majority of my trades, right? You can guys see that I have the options contract here. Um, and I go back, this is from Thursday, okay? But I have the uh, scaling, uh, not the 320s, but 800p Tesla scalp right here at 1131. So you can go to 1131 right here when it dips down, right? 1131, we take these uh, risking $50 per contract, right? Right at 1131. So... I've already explained that I am taking these these uh, calls with risk, or these puts with risk, excuse me. 
and risking $50 per contract, right? Where did I get $60 or $50 from? So I said that um, we're entering right here at the 1131 candle. Right here, you can see the spread from this candle is from 580 to 640. I said that on stream that we were getting in at six bucks. Well, now I'm saying I'm risking $50 per contract because right down below here, this is about $50 per contract, right? From the six bucks to the 544s, right? So about $54, whatever, a little bit more than that. So I'm risking this. I already have a predefined risk. We can see here that from this point, right at $6 to the low, right down there, you can see that that is a 11.17% uh, loss, right? Risking about 10%, okay? So we have entry check. Let me uh, delete this theoretical price. I don't know why. It keeps popping up, right? So we have risk, right? We can say risk is equal to about 11%, right? Now we have this resistance up here as well. You see that my resistance was marked, okay, right here. This was the first target. I think someone has a pop mic in the Discord. All right, first target, obviously, and this was the entry point was right here. So this target was not developed yet until we hit our entry. If you zoom out a little bit, so a little bit more, I think I've deleted these or just right here. So you have your first target, second target, and ultimately your third target, right? And then obviously right here, your entry. Now, why did I select this entry? Can anyone explain to me why this entry was a good entry? Yes, I got you, Tim. I got you. Low risk, higher low, okay? Right, higher low. So exactly. Also, if you look at this, what is this? Can someone explain to me what this is? Yeah, previous buyers, right? Pull back, everything, you guys have got it. This is small, tight body consolidation prior to a large move up. Meaning, so like this is like... If you guys ever have like boiled tea or boiled water or anything like that, right? If you put a lid on it, so like imagine there's like this, you know, we'll draw a little lid, right? You know, lids on it, whatever, right? It's boiling because there's immense amount of pressure here, buying pressure, okay? There's buying pressure on these puts. When it begins to steam over, when the buying orders are overflowing, it creates a surge, right? So this is that tight, small body consolidation prior to the large move up. This is desirable. This is what you want to look for, okay? So let me delete the little lid. You can draw this tight, small body consolidation, just capturing the price action right there, extending these properties out, and... You can see, this is why I entered it. Now, yes, you have a larger range here, 6.5 to 5.5. You do not take an entry as soon as price hits into the zone, okay? So, this was the reasoning for the entry, right? We can say, entry, reasoning, in demand, oh, hold on. In demand, low risk, or relatively, we'll just say relatively. Low risk, higher low, right, yada, yada, okay? We have this. So now we have a planned trade. Now, this obviously will have to be able to be accomplished through over time, back testing. You guys have to be able to, you know, come up with these plans rather quickly, right? I mean, you can see from the trading floor from this point in time on Thursday, 800p tesla scalp risking here 50 dollars per contract a scalp i've also listed to you what type of trade i'm about to take right that's the same thing that you guys should be doing hey i'm about to take this trade i have my risk i have my targets what kind of trade is it is it a trade that you want to hold on a little bit longer to maybe you're going to hold on to the contracts for the remainder of the week depending on the expiry or is this a day trade Right? Is this a longer day trade? Maybe you want to hold 30 minutes, an hour, maybe longer than an hour. Or is it a scalp? Is this something that you're going to hold less than, you know, 10 minutes, 5 minutes, sometimes even less than a minute, right? So always. And then you can see here, what do I do? Obviously, 
Two things are going to occur here. I'm either one, going to get stopped out, or two, it's going to work in my favor. Okay? So you have it. Risking $50 per contract. I risk $50 to scale out where? Two minutes later, 80 a contract, right? Another. It jumped up. $100 per contract now. Going to scale some out. Right here, 140 a contract, right? Look at the time. 1131. 1131, okay? Down here at 140 plus a contract, okay, that's five minutes, all right? So 1136, you can see here, let me remove this, look at the time down here where the mouse is, 1136, right here, we got entry at six, price is already up here, 730, 740, right? And then ultimately, to, uh, at 1137, 200 of contract scaling out, right? 1137, it boom, rips up right there. We already hit our second target, and it's really up to you whether or not you want to hold out for the third. You know, it, it, it's all dependent upon you, but as long as you are offloading your contracts, right, into what? What is this? Right, what am I offloading my contracts into? Into strength, right, exactly, BB1, right? What's our favorite button to use when we're selling into strength? Right, what's my favorite button? When I see a big green stick, right? Join the ask. Exactly. Right. If you if you do not have this button here in your active trader, you're missing out on a lot of money. Okay. Why? Why why might you ask that, right? You're missing out on a lot of money because when you're pushing up here, a lot of traders that you know, and I used to do it myself, right? It's pushing up here. I don't care what yeah, this on the one, right? You're selling market. So you're gonna get a lot of people just sell market or they're taking one contract, it rips up, you're hitting flatten or whatever. Right, you're going to get filled at any price. But with momentum, in order for price to move forward, right, you have to get filled. So you're going to get filled at the premium price, right, rather than getting filled on the bid or maybe even a fishing bid through a market sell. Okay, so look at this. I want you guys to screenshot this. This is how you should be planning your trades. Now, I know a lot of you, maybe you're having... You know, a bit of a, you know, um, I guess, uh, I don't know, adjustment to using the options contract chart. I feel like if you're trading options and not using the options contract chart, that you're really putting yourself at a disservice, right? Um, because these are influence. I know that we're trading based off of, you know, in the underlyings themselves, NVIDIA, QQQ, SPY, whatever you're trading. But since these are susceptible to, the Greeks, right? These are not going to follow the underlying very closely. They're going to have different, you know, kind of weights um, pulling them around in regards to their price, right? We all know on a zero day, a little pullback could be 10 or 20% of a pullback. I think I traded, um, I forgot what I traded, Tesla, some other, what was it on Friday? Yeah, right here, I'll show you. I think I t traded Tesla calls right here on. What day was it? Not Friday. I think it was Friday. Yeah, right here, right on Friday. Right? Test the calls ripped up, scaling, scaling, right? This little pullback. I don't even think it was this one. I think it was like something somewhere in this area. But this little pullback right here knocked it down like 10 or 20% just on a zero day, right? On a further expiry out. You're, this is, you know, from this point to this point. It's going to give you some time to either, hey, should I stop out or scale out majority before this big kind of crash? So, um, let me go through. Let me find another example of a trade. Let me just go through here. I'll go on te or the cues. I think I had it on the drawing set on two. Maybe not. It is one. All right, great. So it's always good to review your plans. Now you guys know, you know, I draw these plans out, draw all the zones out together. You can see from the hourly, we snag these zones, tweezer bottom, tweezer bottom. This was from the 10 minute chart, right? This zone and this zone. So let me show you where I snagged them from, right? Right here. All these lower wicks, I captured them. Lower wicks captured them. Lower wicks captured them. Okay, small tight body consolidation prior to a large move up. Small tight body consolidation. 
and just a pre-market high prior to a move down okay so it's always good to look at your plans and see how they're being respected okay so you can see here i marked the pre-market high and the low these are green and my pre or previous day lows and highs which are purple i know that there's a lot of lines here i'll try to uh clean this up just a little bit here just so it's not so confusing right it's interesting because i always like looking back like when i post these early monday morning See, this was posted Monday morning, right? You can see all same plans, right? But what's going to be respected? Now, these this is like my blueprint for the day, right? I know that these are crucial zones that need to be interacted with in order for price to continue, okay? Now, I just went through, right, the basis for my supply and demand zones. I draw small tight body consolidation areas on the 10 minute chart or either, you know, either the, the one hour or whatever, or I draw large upper wicks, sometimes capturing some of the body so it's not too tight of a zone. Okay. And normally on the intraday, you can look at these zones. They're all about one point or one dollar, right, wide. So this is like from 319.50 up here to 320.11 so about a 60 cent zone okay this one here 322.46 that 323.52 right one point all right so try to keep your zones around a dollar now it may be different obviously if you're trading tesla or you know amazon or google or something but for me trading the Qs and you know nvidia or anything around you know three two three four hundred dollars I like one dollar zones around that range, and now they can go up to a dollar fifty, two bucks. But sometimes it's, you know, that it's too broad of a zone, and you're left with not tight enough of a spread. So you can see here, right? I have these the breaking bases. Now a lot of people ask me about this. You know, what is a breaking base? That's just my own vocabulary. You guys can use like I'm sure you've heard of, you know, rally base rally, or you know, whatever whatever um, kind of term right it's practically just sentiment flip it's either a, a previous support turning into resistance right flipping that sentiment or previous resistance turning into support right that's a break in base yeah exactly so you can see here right i say one or two things one of two things is going to occur here with this zone it's one either going to break in base above it or two reject it and now I know a lot of you in the Discord have heard this, have seen this. You see me do it every morning. There's a reason why I stick with this, right? It's factual. I know that price will do one or two things. It's either going to break and continue or it's going to reject it, right? All right, so there's two things. And if it just goes up there and consolidates, right, then we know those two instances are still valid. It's either going to break up or break down. So you can see here. It pushes up, you get a tweezer top. I'm gonna to be going over tweezer tops as well, but it pushes up, it does not break in base, right? A break in base would be breaking with strength, coming back to base, moving to the next zone, okay? It rejects it, so which one wins this time? The rejection, all right? So, price is gonna go where? Well, we push price down from the pre-market high supply right here, so now we have to interact with this zone. It's going to do one or two things, right? You guys remember, it is breaking with strength. So you know that it's not going to bounce off of it now because it's been pierced. It's not going to bounce, right? You can put a big X on that one. Okay, so it's going to break in base. So if you miss the breakout entry because one, you're not a breakout buyer or whatever, okay, you're always looking for that first pullback. Well, if I clear everything off, Clear everything off, right? You can see this was the pre-market low. Right here was the pre-market low. Okay, how many confluences do I need in order to take a trade, right? Two to three, exactly. So, and we've gone through with the initial, right? This is all tying it in together with the uh, initial kind of opening lesson on entries, exits, and um and price targets okay basing risk and everything like that this is a 10 minute chart rather simplistic very common time frame of a chart right everyone uses it or and if they don't then they should use it i got you 10 yeah don't don't say sorry dude i'm sorry 
because I know you guys are trying to learn and it's getting in the way. Yeah, mine caught war. Um, I don't know if you're trolling or whatever, but you know, I mean, that's honestly that's the problem with traders, right? They have uh, too much weight. They're like, oh my gosh, it's time to load puts, and maybe it works out, but you have to be able to be prepared for the uh, the anomaly rather than you know putting yourself in a position based off of euphoria. Again, tying it into the uh, initial lesson. So it's gonna break it. I'm looking for that previous support to flip to resistance. So that's one, right? Trade checklist. Trade checklist, right? Breaking base. Breaking base on pre-market low. Two, what's the second one? Well, normally traders begin to enter on the 9 EMA or in, uh, in between the 9 EMA and the 20, correct? Risking the area above the 20. So now you have your uh, 20 EMA on the 10 minute risk. Okay, that's your, so there's two, there's two right there. This is also what, after what? This is what guys, what is this? The first pullback, exactly Zach, right? Exactly, it's the first pullback. Everyone foaming at the mouth to get into puts, right? These traders get punished, they end up being liquidity. Right, so many times I see traders. Okay, time to load puts after the move has already happened. So they get in puts down here. When it pulls back, maybe their sentiment or their choice of trade is correct. Okay, but they're too early in the trade. How many of you have been too early into the trade? Right, waiting for the first pullback and the second pullback is key. Right, so many people enter the trades and they're like, oh my god. It's so annoying to hear, and I'm not saying from you guys, but even like from your own self, right? Having to say, oh my God, I was right again, and I got stopped out, and it dumped X amount of points more, right? It's annoying to hear it yourself, because it's a pain in the ass, right? And it's like something so simplistic, and it's all based off of emotions. It's from the very beginning of this video, I said, traders need to stray away from trading based off of emotions, okay? wait for the pullback so this is also first five minute ema pullback right take the fucking trade take it right why why would i say just take it you have this checklist already right there what's stopping you you have your risk over the 20 ema maybe if they close with strength or even if they pierce up to vwap maybe if you're trading a further expert out what's stopping you from taking the trade right we're going to circle back here. It's the emotions. Once again, do not let emotions hold you back from taking your trades. You're fearful at this point. You're like, oh man, I'm not even looking at puts because these candles are green. So that means let me look at calls. We're going to break VWAP, right? That overly bullish, overly breakout kind of uh, you know perspective. Buyers turn into sellers at some point, meaning that sellers also have to turn into buyers right they're borrowing their shares borrowing whatever and they have to buy these back so when you see a little bit of green in a very strong bearish trend these are sellers covering these are sellers they're just taking profit then the shorts that did not get in on the initial dump right here they have their opportunity this is their chance with low risk okay so yeah, I mean, market makers love for you to FOMO. They love for you to get into the trade. And yeah, I know it takes. Look, let me say, hey, you get in the puts. Let's see how green you are. Let's see. You're green for, you know, right there. Oh, I just put a million arrows. Let's say you take entry right there. Okay, you're not even really green. You're in the middle here, bouncing back and forth. You get stopped out on the pullback. This is actually where you should be entering, right? I said many times, traders, newer traders, where they actually stop out. That's actually a prime entry point, okay? Why is that? Because market makers love to buy those cheap contracts from you that you think are done, okay? So you have your risk, okay? Where is your target? Can someone explain to me where is the next target if you enter here on the pullback, right? We'll put the house of stacks up. Where, the next low day break, next lower low. New, look at that, right? Why? And why is that? Because many times we've gotten to this point 
just like this. We're going to go on a smaller time frame, just like this off the open. I was screaming, hey, this is an open morning scalp, right? Many times there's a dip before the rip. We know that. It cracked this lower low. What was I screaming? Scaling, scaling, scaling. I mean, we can go back. You know, let's see. Right here, look. 323Ps, scaling out, right? Scale out majority near three, stopped out the rest, right at 932, right? Instantly. Why? Right here, 932, what happens? It rips up, breaks over VWAP, but I scaled majority of mine out over three bucks when I entered them at 250, right? $50 per contract. So, um, going through here, don't want to lose. Okay, yeah, here, let me continue this, uh, what I was talking about, right? Where's the next target? So you got your pullback on the five minute. You have all of the confluences, right? It didn't take you that, that long to, you know, kind of explain them. Where's the next target? Well, you have this low a day. You're not going to sell. Why would you sell preemptively, right? Maybe if you want to lock in a little bit, right? And I do that, but I'm saying, why would you sell your entire position before your targets hit, right? It's the same thing about following your plan, right? Why would you stop out before your stop loss hit? Emotions, your fear. Why would you sell before your targets hit? Emotions, fear. It's a threat to your profitability. You're afraid that if you don't sell now, that you're not going to be able to sell later at a higher price because that, that time may never come. But if you don't have the guts to hold through it, you're never going to see that kind of experience. And then you're never going to, you know, obviously make or use your money to make more, right? Meaning that, you know, what you sold down here entirely. You sold for pennies when you could have sold for, you know, uh, I mean, on a zero day on the queues. This right here is 20% of a trade. This is 150% way down here. Okay. So where is the next profit uh, taking area? Your, you know, your main first scale out this little pivot low break. This is your first one right there. What's your second one? Well, you're, we're going to let this develop. It's either two going to be. Or one, it's either going to be you're getting stopped out, or two, this next little pullback, right? But it pulls back. You can see that it has a little pivot here, okay? It flushes. You scale out a little bit more. Where's the next target? Well, you just developed another pivot point, okay? Remember a break and base? This pre-market low break and base? Well, it happens all the time. Remember this previous pivot? It's broken based upon did any candle close above this previous resistance which flipped to support no why i don't know if you guys remember very early on in the group right uh, i said to always ask yourself this throughout the day right and it is who is in control of the current trend right who's in control obviously here you would say that shorts are in control why is that you're under vwap the five minute and the ten minute 9 and 20 EMA are in a bearish strength here, and VIX is looking very bullish. VIX is very strong, right? So you know that shorts are in control, meaning that these this buying here, these are shorts. These are shorts locking in profit or, you know, maybe long scalping, whatever. Okay, so we have to understand that. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the original chart, but, you know, you can see we have the risk, we have the entry with low risk, and we have our target right and our target develops throughout the day honestly this chart if you traded based off of the momentum of the emas never told you to uh, stop out completely right never told you to stop out completely but did tell you to scale or move your stop loss along the way okay so we'll go back to default one just going through here you can see each zone break and base what happens we go to this next zone consolidation it's broken based upon right comes back down consolidates here for a moment at the previous day low buyers are you know they've already lost three or two demand zones this there's no demand at this point because they just failed the last two this is not a crucial level 315 the whole dollar psych is what is the next target right and what do we hit we cracked through 317 uh, right here 314 315 is where you start start to see buyers stepping into the trade once again okay um, up late Nate says any thoughts on how you can share an optimal account size for a goal of 1k per week trading four to five days per week um, at this point if you're trading you're asking me how you can make a thousand dollars a week 
you have the wrong perspective in in uh, in regards to trading, right? Sure, it's okay to have a monetary goal. Everyone does, but the money is going to follow if you put on good trades, right? And good trades are not only profitable trades; they're also losing trades. If you can put on a good losing trade, you're. I mean, m most of the time, I'd say majority of the time, traders will make it through that kind of mindset alone, right? You will be able to. Hey, I just stopped out of the trade for ten, maybe fifteen percent. Well, that's a good trade because my average, uh, you know, return is about 40, 50, 100, 150 percent, especially trading options. Right. So I really wouldn't even focus so much on the goal of a thousand dollars per week. Maybe you're trying to supplement your income, anything like that. But that's going to put a lot of inherent stress on your trading where trading should solely be focused on putting quality trades. Everything that I've told you this entire session. Right. Entries, exits um, and your risk. Yeah, no problem, right? I mean, you guys will see. I'm going to be trading this entire week. I mean, you know, I we call trades every single day, and they make at least $80 to $100 per contract, right? It's really dependent upon what you're comfortable trading, okay? I mean, for me, if you're not a consistent trader in regards to your stop loss, then meaning like if you can't make 25 50 bucks a day consistently because you're aiming for 300 400 500 dollars a day there's a problem there right so um you think if spy fails 410 uh sp it's gg uh no i mean i think we'll go below 400 i'm excited for it because i see good opportunity i know that we have fomc and a lot of you know economic catalysts but uh, that that's the beauty of being a day trader, right? I love those kind of instances. They do bring a, a bit of, you know, anxiety, but they do also bring in volatility and volume. We know when, uh, I don't know what date the last FMC was, but, you know, it's going to do crazy stuff. It's going to spike around, and then you're just going to see it rip up or dump in one way. And it gives you such great... I would really just wait 5 minutes, 10 minutes after the initial move. A lot of people want to straddle into this or that. Sure, you can. Uh, for me, it's all about pullbacks. Um, if it's on strong, you know, volume-based momentum, I like the 1 and the 3-minute uh, with their, your 9 and 20 EMAs. So... Yeah, thanks, JD Claire. I appreciate that. Yeah, just to uh, pop in, right, uh, this one will probably last a little bit over an hour, but uh, looking at the daily poll, right, we've had a pretty good run this past week, right, a 112 to 58 with seven record days, 150 to 57, uh, five record days, 126 to 101, nine record days, right, and then uh, 122 to 81 with five record days. Uh, Monday was pretty tough for everyone. I came out green. But, uh, you know, it was very choppy on that day. And traders, obviously, what is the, you know, um, statistically, traders' worst days, Mondays and Fridays, right? Also, touching on profits and percents in the group, I think this is about right. Yeah, look, Sen season. I, we'll, we'll just highlight some of the big winners. I think I need to upgrade Sen. Sen's been doing great. Uh, 1500 bucks right there. Lots of good trades. Good work, guys. You know, we're going to keep it up. Uh, a lot of big winners from Friday. I think this was Thursday. Whack, nice on the uh, on the your uh, e minis. Um, RPTX eleven hundred bucks, right? I love seeing those four figure days from you guys. It's insane, right? That the fact that you know, and every day, whoever you are uh, has the ability to, or even the you know option to make that in uh, terms of you know what's available or what's pushed from a societal standard. 520 bucks from BB1, right? Good work. Nando with 20, uh, 300 bucks, right here. Send season again, another four figure day, right? Doesn't beat uh, anything else really. You could really call it a day and just go enjoy your uh, your life, right? Praveen, another thousand dollars. Where's Mr. Harris at? Oh, this guy. I'm watching a UK Kenny, right? This guy, he's um, he came into the group with uh, I guess you know. Talk to him about the psychological kind of standpoint in, in regards to trading, right? You know, trying to overcome, let's say you're down X amount of dollars. You're going to focus on that loss 
and focus on recouping those losses much more than you are going to be focused on putting on good trades and following rules or even developing your own rules. So I'm excited to see. So you have to stay level-headed. I know it sucks, but I, I really treat you know those initial losses from when you're learning um, like a death in the family, right? You're grieving. For, there's a stage of grief, and then there's a stage where you overcome this and you can move on, right? Um, also, Ace wrapped it up with $10,751 on the month. This guy has a full-time job, right? What a monster. He also um, is going through, right, some kind of battles with himself, but comes out green on top. Can't complain about that. Uh, where's Mr. Harris? Nice biomech, 242 bucks. RPTX again, 627 bucks. A little tag there from NXPX. Nice uh, risk management though, right? E, very good. Where's, where'd he go? RPTX, another one, 1320. I think he bumped it up. And then Mr. Harris wrapped it up. I think that was the biggest win for the day on Friday in the group, right? About 3,100 bucks. Just chilling, right? Just chilling. Four for seven even. Look at those those stats. It's about 60-40. I mean, I know not to a T, but, you know, very good. We know that with proper risk, you could lose more of your trades than your winning trades, but as long as you have a 10%, 15% stop loss and you ride your winners, it doesn't really matter. Um, Let's see. So going through, I also have been getting a lot of questions about tweezer tops. I think we're going to go over them. I don't know. What do you guys think? I think tweezer tops, one of my favorite strategies. Um, and relatively simple. I mean, you only need one minute, five minute charts up. Maybe the 10 at times. 10 is also good. And uh, I, I, I've used it for years now, right? So... Um, Okay, Esteban says, once a stock breaks the supply zone, does it become a demand zone? I've heard there's versions of this concept. So, now not always, right? It has to be under the right circumstances, meaning, like I would love to show you an example here. I don't know if I can, if I see anything. I don't know. I have to show you in another example, but we'll go over the tweezer tops. But yes, uh, same thing. Demand can flip to supply or supply can flip to demand, right? These are your breaking bases, but they should be taken with caution always, right? Because you never know when that sentiment is really fully going to develop. You have to confirm with one, you know, look at your futures, look at, you know, your indexes, your VIX, anything like that. Check out your indicators and, and you know, every trade is different, right? Every trade is unique because of the, you know, the group of participants taking that trade day in, day out is going to vary. Okay, so let's go for tweezer tops. Now, I'm just going to go through the chart is cleared, right? I don't have any examples pre-listed. We're just going to go through the days, and I'm going to show you two ways that you can trade tweezer tops. Okay, so tweezer tops, right? A lot of people are like, hey, do the wicks have to match up? Does the, is it about the bodies? For me... The wicks do not matter. I do like to see some uh, some longer wicks, right, to show that, you know, these sellers are digging in a little bit deep. But what it matters to me, right, are these, uh, the bodies lining up. So meaning, this is like, you know, you ever play like Fruit Ninja, right, you can just slice this off, right? There's nothing closing above. This is considered to me a wall, okay? A wall sits there, okay? Another tweezer top right there, right? A wall is sitting there. All right. Now you have two, and I guys, I want you guys to understand. Okay. Answer this question yourself. Does any strategy work 100% of the time? Just take a moment, right? I'll drink some water. No, no strategy works 100% of the time. Remember the house of cards analogy, right? You guys have built, right? Little house of cards, okay? You know, hey, I'm building this little house of cards, right? Whatever. Let's put the little, you know, the cards over the top. We can build more cards, right? Oh, shit. I put this one on and it falls, right? This shit is gone. It falls. Same thing with a trade. Hey, I'm putting in bids. I'm scaling in. I'm, sc I'm doing this. 
Oh, it just failed. Right? Same thing with any concept. You have to understand this. All right, so you have two instances here that you can trade a tweezer top, right? Um, yeah, I'll go over that e entry, right? So you have two entries. Now, this is from my perspective, right? I'm, I may just come up and think like, oh, well, this is another way to trade them. Okay, but these are the two that the ways that I like to. So this is obviously on a five minute. One of these candles equals five one minute bars, right? So you have the ability... This five minute candle is formed. You can bid into this upper wick. Okay. That's one entry. So, um, entry or here, I'll type in possible entry. Bidding in, entering in upper wick. Okay. So there you go. There's your first entry. Let me make this a little bigger, probably. Right? There's your entry. Uh, you click the mouse wheel. Yep, you click the mouse wheel. See, I'm clicking it. Okay, that's your first entry. This, to me, this is the better entry. Why, why is this the better entry? Now, you know, I, I, I do this often. I'm always going to ask you guys why this, why that, because I really... You know, the point of the group is for me not to create sheep, right? The point of the group is to create traders that want to think independently, that want to become independent. You know, you're going to have to push yourself there, right? And I'm just pushing, pushing, pushing. Low risk, right? Obviously, that's the prime entry. It's a low risk. You'd stop out over the high of the day. Maybe you get wicked out. Maybe you don't, right? Whatever. Okay, now this second kind of entry that I like to do. Let's say that you're not a good trader in regards to bidding in. You have a, <clears throat> excuse me, you have an issue, um, you know, trusting reversals or pinpointing reversals, right? But you can identify tweezer tops, but you you don't bid in into the upper wick or get close to the upper wick. Okay, what you can do, right, is take the following candle. Now, either on the three minute, on the three minute or the five minute risking the following candle after the tweezer top the high right right here we took this trade you guys remember this look we'll go through on the drawing set right here 325p stop loss right here at the top of this candle right so we took this trade i called this out right so you take this first candle Risking the high of the following either three minute or five minutes up to your discretion. This is your risk. All right. And then, so what's next? What's your targets? Right. Where are you going to scale out? Where's your entry? Obviously, you want to get as close to the, you know, high of this candle as possible. So you have low risk. But where's your scale out? Well, there's the low of this candle. Low of this candle breaks. I'm joining the ask selling off my puts right scaling out of my puts hey where's the lower day there's another target hey another lower day is held boom right what is holding you in this trade at this point look at you break vwap 920 ema is holding yada yada right so that was an instance now i'm going to clear this out again so here let me write this you guys can screenshot it i'll give you a moment right second possible entry taking entry on following three minute or five minute candle using the high of that candle as your risk stop loss okay so you can screenshot this Come on. Okay. So this is what I like using for these two entries on the tweezer tops. Um, Cole, Cole, I don't know. I mean, do you think I'm just I've been trading with a room and this, this was the only basis of my trading, right? Did, did you not think that I've been trading for years beyond this and was able to come up with my own strategy? 
um, going through just simply off the basics trading this. I mean, did you not just see all of the traders that I listed making four figure days, even making three figure days, right? So, I mean, that talk right there, this guy, right? Traders get into such a, a an issue of, of jealousy and envy. Who gives a fuck what other what another man's finances are, right? You sound so ridiculous fit talking about other people's money, right? I mean, it's sad, honestly, because it strays away from the common point. I'm giving a lesson, and you're sitting here talking about my pockets, right? It's strange. Very strange. So, going through, we're going to continue the lesson, right? I'm going to go through with tweezer tops and bottoms for those who are here to learn, okay? You can see, the upper wicks do not matter as long as I see a horizontal level being covered, right? So, what was the rule? You either bid in to the upper wick... Or you take the following candle after the five minute candle, correct? Risking the high. So we're going to move this candle to the high. Edit the properties, turn it red. Right? And like, and I really want people to understand, like, you know, I think Q, Q brought this up greatly, right? He was like, yo, I try to, to live trade, right? And, and he was like, I don't know how Maple does it, right? Go ahead. You guys go in live trade. I mean, every single time I'm trading, it's on video, it's on stream. You hear my voice in live time in the Discord, right? Go and trade live, have hundreds of people watch you, judge your every movement, and you tell me how easy it is to trade, okay? So we took this trade right here. Let's say you're taking the first candle after the tweezer top, risking the five-minute high of the candle. What occurs, right? Well, you have your entry right here. You have your risk. You have your pro your price target where you're going to scale out. Why are you so scared to take the trade? Right? Why are you so scared to take the trade? Does anyone have, you know, an idea as to why someone would be afraid to take this trade? Right? Emotions, right? PTSD, anxiety, right? Fear of failure. Yeah, skinny toaster, right? You remember that that NVIDIA tag, right? That you that we all took. I took this loss. You guys see me every day. I take fucking losses on the chin, right? I took the loss. What did I do? Look, we'll show you. Right here, where's the NVIDIA trade? Um, All time stamped. I mean, guys, come on. I don't know why. Who any... Why would anyone fucking... Let's see, where is the NVIDIA? Was it from Friday? Oh, right here. 190p on NVIDIA. Scaled in, right? Look at the time. 9.46. What time is that? 9.48. About to get stopped out. When do I get stopped out? Right here, 9.48. I fucking have a two-minute window of where I'm de debating to stop out. Where traders get so afraid, right? They get so afraid of stopping out because why? Because they're afraid that they're a loser, they're going to fail or whatever else, right? I love stopping out for predefined risk. That means that, hey, I was wrong. One, I can go back and review it and learn from it. And two, I'm going to move on to the next trade. What did I do right after? 948, 954, six minutes later, right? Six minutes later, taking 325 calls from QQQ, risking VWAP. What happened? Scaling out of calls, 2.2 to 2.5, $30 per contract, watching for the ladder, right? Scaling in, right? And so on and so forth. If you cannot let that tilt you, I know that that early on in your trading career, it's going to tilt you. You're going to have issues with that. Everyone does, but you must be able to get to a point where you're going to overgrow or, you know, overcome that and grow out of that, right? I used to take a loss and sit there like, oh my God. I just lost X, you know, amount of hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars, right? I think someone, uh, I don't know, before the live session started, they went over that, uh, the Google Drive video for where I lost like $7,000, right? What did you learn from that video? I don't know who, who posted that, right? Well, what did you learn from that? I lost $7,000, but I did what, right? I didn't freeze up. I didn't lock up. I didn't get paralyzed, Okay. I got the money back and I came out green on the end of the day and I learned right through patience. Now, really what that should have been was the initial $7,000 loss was, um, you know, poorly planned, 
not respecting a stop loss, whatever. I really made seven plus thousand dollars that day, right? But solely through following my rules, remaining uh, stoic and emotionally balanced, okay? Yeah, uh, stay, uh, acclimate. Everything I'm talking about, you're going to be able to apply, you know, on pretty much anything. Uh, Forex, crypto, yada, yada. So we're going to continue with the tweezer top lesson. Okay, we went through this one and this one. Okay, now let's go through this one. Look, another one, right? You have to be watching these. I always look at the five minute, right? Okay, tweezer top. Obviously, the bodies are lining up, right? Hey, nothing closing over that. It flushes down. You either take this is your high of the risk, or you can risk this. Either one, it's up to you. It's contextual. This is your risk. You enter the trade. Where's your target? There's the low. Low breaks. You never stopped out. You're scaling out down here, rolling in cash, okay? Yeah, if you're new, do not trade zero days, okay? So we're going to go through. I'm just sticking on the five minute. We're going to show you how proven this strategy is trading tweezer tops and bottoms, okay? Now, remember... Tweezer tops and bottoms must be near an area of possible reversal or point of interest, right? Key level indicator zone, whatever, right? So moving on, let's look at Thursday. Hey, what is this, guys? What is that? Let's clear the chart. Oh, it's already cleared out. What's this? Look, another tweezer top. Why is it? Because no bodies are closing above this. Take the first five-minute candle after, risking the high. We'll just leave it at this line. That's your stop loss. Where is your target? Your target is this most recent pivot. Always, always, always the most recent pivot. Okay? You scale out. Boom. You're locking in profit. What happens here? What happens on this pre-market low? Someone in Twitch. Are you guys paying attention? What happens right here? Breaking base, right? Exactly. Breaking base. It's broken. Previous resistance or previous support flips to resistance. Breaking base. You also have the uh, confluence of the 20 EMA and VWAP here, right? Tweezer top worked out in that instance. Let's look at it again, right? You have a tweezer top right here. Body's lined off, right? You can mark the high as this as your risk, okay? Enter within this area. You want to get relatively close after this candle closes, right? You don't want to be like, oh, I'm entering down here, okay? Pivot low breaks. Whoops. Pivot low breaks, right? Right there, boom. This is your area of liquidity. You always scale out on a pivot low break or move your stop loss down, okay? Uh, at least a, a fraction of your position because what happens? You get uh, waked up up here. This is what protects you, scaling out on your pivot low breaks, Okay, we're going to go through again. So this on the 10 minute surely is a tweezer bottom. On the 5, you can see the same thing. No candles closing above. Excuse me. Um, right here, next 5 minute candle, right? Out of the range. This is your stop loss. Where's your target? Right, so let's label these. Stop loss. Target. Okay. Stop loss target, right? Your entry on this five minute candle here. You see, what other tools could you use to hold you into that trade? Exactly. EMAs, EMAs, right? Pivot points, whatever. All of it. So this is exactly why, right? You get your entry, you scale out, you scale out, you scale out. You're like, whoa, this is ripping up. What is this the trans transformation of, right? Your base hit trade, whatever X where you're trading, I don't care. You're at least getting 20 to 30% in this area on a zero day, much more. But you're, you're at least getting 20 to 30%. That's your sweet spot. That's where you always want to be locking in profit. So like, let's say I have a, you know, let's just say you're, you're taking 20 contracts, right? I mean, you know, just for example purposes, right? 
20 contracts, right? If I can scale out consistently half of those contracts at around 20 to 30%, then I'm making consistently 20 to 30% on half of my position size or half of my money each time I take a trade, right? Of course, it may go higher, it may go lower, right? But those base hit trades, as long as you can ride them out, these are what turn into home run trades, right? They're the ones that everyone's looking for, the big winner on the day, right? Your small trades have a snowball effect building up into that home run trade, holding on through EMAs or moving your stop loss up through pivot points, okay? So... Okay, Noonan says that, that entry there, um, I th is this the same day? Yeah, this is from Thursday. Can you spend time on it and show how you can see this as support for a higher low? When you see support not letting it dip a penny under. Okay, so I think really what this is is like this consolidation range. You can see I'm just capturing the lower wicks and the bodies right here. Now, of course, this is contextual. You can, you know, draw it up like that large or whatever. Really, this is a five minute chart. So like uh, Noonan, so like for myself, right? So this is a rip. This is a pullback. Many times traders are like, we want things to, to turn out symmetrically, right? We really want things to be able to like, hey, I want this to look pretty on the five minute chart or on the 10 minute chart or whatever, but that's not always the case. And that's why we get wicked out as traders. I know that, hey, this is, pull, this is pushing up. It's going to need a pullback to confirm this breakout, right? So on the first pullback, I'm waiting to see. Now, maybe you determine the support there and you get stopped out or you just don't take the trade. But when it's coming down rounding, you can mark that support, right? Um, I don't know if I can zoom out a little bit here. If there's anything else. Oh, look. From the low, you know, the yes previous day low right there, this general area, you can mark this lower wick. I'm just going to mark this green bar right here, this wick. Okay. Edit the properties, expand it out, right? That's where they ate it up for the higher low. And just like what I'm talking about, like, you know, traders, they really want, you know, even myself, I want things to look beautiful, look symmetrical. I would have looked for like, hey, I'm I'm searching for that VWAP breaking base. I wanted to hold VWAP, you know, instantly flip it, but you know, it didn't pan out that way. What do I look for when I start switching from puts to calls or calls to puts? Um, guys, I am always, always, always looking at both perspectives. You guys will see many times I'm in both calls and puts, right? I think on the cues from Friday. Oh, yeah. And this range right here. I love this right here. This was the low a day, right? Or maybe you just mark this. This was the low a day at one point, and then it gets pierced a little bit, right? Then you have your consolidation range. This range right here, I'm not bullish or bearish. I, I may have the understanding that the bears are in control because they are under VWAP for that moment in time, but I'm looking at both calls and puts. I want exposure on both sides. Your goal as a trader, guys, right? It's not to. It's not for, for your analysis to be perfect 100% of the time. All I care about is getting into the right fucking trade, right? I just want to be on the right side of the trade, but with low risk. I'm not going to gamble, right? But I want, I'm, I'm searching and yearning for the right trade. So what I mean by that, how can you have both exposure? You can have the calls near the low a day. Why? Because it's low risk and the puts near this consolidation range high. If you go through here or here, you're neither red or, you know, very seldomly break even, hardly at all in this consolidation range until what, right? One side's going to break. I talk about it. It's like a boiling pot of water. You know, you put a, you put this, look at it. We're ranging, ranging, or not ranging. We're trending, trending hard, trending hard. Then the pressure builds, right? We're consolidating. This is like a, a you know, a pressure cooker or a, bottle pulling water you put the lid on right it's concealed it's gonna break towards one way and having exposure will protect you i don't care let's say hey i had calls in here i got stopped out sure but the puts now i got something cooking right now i can roll these out and look exactly what they do um i don't give more weight on pre-market higher pre-market lows really what it is uh the bastard is more so weighing on what 
area buyers and sellers are uh, most likely conducting business where they most recently are uh my worst trade of the week i mean i don't really recollect like having a worst trade of the week but maybe i can look at like uh maybe on monday maybe on monday what is this monday what day is this 425 yeah so monday this was a pain in the ass and everyone knew it i mean look at the days prior right One second. Yeah, this is the day I overtraded. Monday. You guys remember that? I was like, man, I want to come into the rest of the week. I need to refine myself. You guys see this. And like, that's the beauty of like the live trading is like, you know, you guys are going to hear all my struggles, all my thoughts, everything like that. I don't care. I'm content in who I am as a trader. I I'll do whatever right i know my you know i know when i i take a bad trade i know when i take a good trade all right monday this is the 20 oh this is 328 i need what the hell this went back far okay where's the 20 no this is the 20th 25th right here 25th okay this was monday from last week okay now i said hey guys on thursday we had a crazy dump Friday, we had a crazy dump, two trend days. We really need to be careful going into the Monday. And I was, I came out green, but it was, you know, on the intraday, a little bit crazy, right? I mean, you can see this range here, nothing holding a true range, but you can see later on as the chart developed, it gave you a story, okay? You have this double bottom, you have consecutive higher lows, higher lows, higher lows, but were your five minute EMAs doing you any justice that day? This is why I always say you guys cannot be biased on trading one EMA, one indicator, one strategy, whatever. Because let's say like, hey, oh, dude, I studied, you know, I'm, I'm Joe Schmo, right? I studied five minute EMAs this whole weekend and I'm going to go kill it, right? Then you come back on Monday and the five minute EMA gave you no, absolutely no trades on Monday, right? Really, this was a supply and demand day. You can see this, right? Double bottom, left shoulder, the head, the right shoulder, pushing it from zone to zone, right? Then back to zone. Then they start consolidating up here, right? You can clear this out again. Then you have another range. You can see this range here and this range there, right? Um, Let's see. So um, I think I'm going to wrap it up here. I think we went over quite a few things, right? Before I wrap it up, um, remember, guys, in... On Twitter, I have posted this. We have a giveaway. Let me see if I can find it. We have a giveaway. I'm giving away five spots for the month of May. Um, I'll probably give them out tomorrow. Well, I am giving them out tomorrow, but probably tomorrow on the stream. You can check this out here. Uh, I'll post a link, right? But we stream like this about three to four times a week in the Discord. Uh, EDU sessions, right? Live trading every single day, all of that. All trades are timestamp called out. Uh, same thing is on stream, right? You can go on the trading floor. You can look at all my trades, right? Uh, we we killed it on Friday. I was like, I'm checking out. I'm gonna go enjoy my life. That's the whole point of this, guys. Don't sit there and and chain yourself to the desk. Okay, I'm done at 12 o'clock, one o'clock every single day. And, uh, you know, it really helps me with the mental aspect that, you know, comes with trading. You don't want to be, you know, creating another poor situation for yourself, right? Trying to supplement your income in a different way. So you can check out that giveaway. Uh, the Discord has opened for those of you who are just wanting to get in. Um, I am live stream trading just like I do every single week on the first week of the month. Or um, I'll be live trading Monday through Friday on twitch you guys will be able to see the process if you're you know kind of on the fence about you know the edu or the trading or anything you'll be able to see everything in real time and the same experience that you have in the discord right so um you know i could probably give a quick one away right uh if this was helpful for helpful to you right or i'll just go to nightbot right was this helpful to, for you guys though was this able to like prepare you for the week ahead. I know that we have FOMC, a lot of financial catalysts, like I said. Um, you guys really need to be able to prepare yourself and 
be in a defensive state, right? Trading for me, I'm going to be bidding in a lot more this week. I'm going to be trading supply and demand, right? So um, I really hope that these sessions aid you in some sense, right? I mean, I'm here to, you know, really just show you guys that like, hey, I mean, I used to work regular jobs. I was working an $8 an hour job four to five years ago, right? I was living in a mobile home. I don't have a college degree. I don't come from money. My parents have, you know, my dad, the most he's ever made was $80,000 a year working in a factory, right? I have no support system, but you can do this. If you have the patience, if you have the right mindset going into this, right? You're not looking at it from a gambling perspective, Right, you're more so looking at it from a longevity perspective, how long you can stay a trader, right? Keeping your seat at the table. So, you know, uh, but we can do a quick giveaway just for one, right? Just for one, someone who tuned in and stayed the entire time. But, uh, you know, you guys can type a one. Wait, hold on, no, no, don't do it yet. All right, you can type a one if you want to enter the giveaway. Oh, shit, hold on. I think this should start entering people, right? Yo, Noon in 10 months, man. You know, I remember when Noonan messaged me, he had like Flash Gordon or something, like from Atlas a long time ago. Uh, it's been, uh, you know, I'm very, very grateful that we're uh, friends and that our uh, paths have crossed. Lots of ones. Let's see, you know, if you guys want a one month membership in the Discord to the House of Stacks, right? As you guys are typing these in, uh, we can go through right profits percent. This is where everyone posts all the trades that they make, all the money, uh, and, and even some losses. Right? You can we we're fully disclosed. Right? Try to be accountable where we can, um, which is all the time. Stacks chat. This is where everyone comes in, and you guys have the type of one in the Twitch chat. And I think this is this is only going to be for members or people who are not members. Right? Someone who hasn't had the opportunity to be in the group yet right we have the skilled floor these are members who have built up a uh you know their experience in the group and have shown you know uh consistent either you know strategies or you know process progress along the way uh these are watch lists this is the pre-market prep that i do every morning i stream every single day 8 30 in the morning till about 12 to 1 o'clock and i start the morning off charting off qqq amd nvidia tesla and spy Charting out these situational kind of uh, instances where I know one of four or one or two of these uh, plans will go into effect, right? Giving me very good statistics. So um, lots of EDU as well. We have books, supply and demand, tons of supply and demand videos, right? Also, uh, the one second, one second, the uh, Google Drive. Right, a lot of people ask me this. Remember, guys, if you're in the Discord, it is in the Start Here channel, okay? And it has all of the live sessions, all of the strategies that we have done since the beginning of the Discord group, right? Supply and demand, how to hold on to winners, how to you know um, identify stop losses, planning trades, options basics, you know EMAs, everything, how to execute options trades on Thinkorswim. Applying edge, avoiding over trading, how to control emotions, right? All sorts of videos, over a hundred videos here that you can check out and study within the group, right? So uh, we're gonna go through the giveaway and I'll roll one. We'll see if they're a member in the House of Stacks. If not, then uh, you win, right? So let's uh, roll it. All right, Rabbit NYC, right? Been following since uh, looks like February twenty fifth. All right, so if Rabbit NYC is not in the House of Stacks in the Discord, you can send me a DM on Twitch, and we'll get you figured out and settled tonight. So um, remember, guys, have your notifications on, whether it be on Twitter or Twitch. I think Twitter is kind of a little much sometimes, but uh, Twitch, I will be on in the morning, about eight thirty in the morning preparing everyone and myself for the trading day ahead of us. So, um, see you guys in the morning, right? I hope this helped. Thank you for your time this evening. And, uh, you know, get some rest, drink some water, and uh, take care, right? Good luck to you this week. Thanks, guys.